You're fired. 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 Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind, a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. Friends, it's finally happening. Elon Musk officially announced his plan is to buy Twitter by Friday. I'm releasing this video on Thursday, so apparently Elon Musk is taking over Twitter tomorrow. Cue the leftist meltdown. Well, apparently they beat me to the punch, because leftoids are already losing their damn minds. But probably the greatest meltdown of all, the greatest gem of this whole thing, is the continued hysteria and meltdown coming from left-wing Twitter employees. They are frantic, they are hysterical, they are panicking, and they just released a collective public statement to Elon Musk, who said that he would be shaving off the workforce by 75% after taking over, where they essentially wrote something to the effect of, no, please don't fire us, evil fascist Elon Musk. It's imperative that we continue to control speech for the Democrat Party and the FBI, rather than, you know, run a business and turn a profit. This whole thing is just ridiculous. Let me show you guys what's going on. And of course, let's just talk about the future of Twitter. We've got some stuff to get into, so let's roll the tape. All right, folks, so we've got this update right over here from Bloomberg.com. Musk tells bankers he plans to close Twitter deal on Friday. Elon Musk pledged Monday to close the acquisition of Twitter Inc. by Friday in a video conference call with bankers, helping fund the deal according to people with knowledge of the matter. The banks, which are providing $13 billion of debt financing, have finished putting together the final credit agreement and are in the process of signing the documentation, one of the last steps before actually sending the cash to Musk, said the people, who asked not to be named discussing a private transaction. And so it's official, folks. Elon Musk has the extra financing cash coming from the bank right around the corner. It just needs one signature and it's good to go. And Elon Musk is officially the owner of Twitter. And now a lot of people have been unsure whether whether this deal was actually going to go through and honestly at one point I wasn't so sure because let's be real here Twitter itself at least in its current state is a total pile of you know what and Elon Musk offering $54.20 a share is extremely generous to say the least I wouldn't pay more than 30 but in the end he made the offer they accepted the offer and now he's got the financing and Elon Musk is taking over the platform and now that it's all but confirmed well Twitter employees aren't so happy Twitter employees panned for letter to Elon Musk demanding continued employment and safety. Take a look at this letter. It's absolutely hilarious. The full text of the open letter. Staff, Elon Musk, and the staff of directors. We, the undersigned Twitter workers, believe the public conversation is in jeopardy. Elon Musk's plan to lay off 75% of Twitter workers will hurt Twitter's ability to serve the public conversation. A threat of this magnitude is reckless, undermines our users and customers, trust in our platform, and is a transparent act of worker intimidation. Twitter has significant effects on societies and communities across the globe. As we speak, Twitter is helping to uplift independent journalism in Ukraine and Iran, as well as powering social movements around the world. Man, these tech working leftoids are honestly insufferable. It's almost as if they have a god complex. What they don't seem to understand is that the public conversation doesn't need them. You know, independent journalism in Ukraine or Iran doesn't need to be amplified. If it's good, hard-hitting journalism and if it's exposing facts and new information that people are interested in, well, then it's gonna spread naturally. We don't need you leftoids manipulating the algorithm them to show us what you believe is righteous. The public conversation does a good job at that already baseline by virtue. You aren't as important as you think you are in this idea that Twitter needs to serve the public conversation and that Elon Musk is undermining the trust in your platform is a complete joke. You don't serve public conversation. You alter it and skew it to favor one political side and to promote FBI narratives as has been proven. And that's pretty much one of the major reasons why Elon Musk is buying the platform and it's also probably a reason why he's going to fire your behind because you undermine public conversation and don't allow it to thrive naturally and you think that that's somehow your job or that's somehow the value that you're providing to society your job is to turn a damn profit something which these twitter employees have
have been unable to do for a significant period of time. It's not exactly difficult. Twitter's a public company. All you got to do is type in Google Twitter financial or fiscal statements and then just scroll down the financial statement and you'll see exactly what's going on at Twitter. In the year 2021, Twitter had a total revenue of $5 billion. It says $5 million, but the numbers are shortened for the sake of the financial statement. That's actually $5 billion. But they had costs and expenses of nearly $5.6 billion, and they incurred a net income loss of $221 million in the year of 2021. And if I'm not mistaken, it looks like a $1.1 billion loss in 2020. It looks as if that is in fact correct based on this headline, Twitter reports $1.1 billion net loss for 2020, costs and expenses rise by 19%. The simple fact of the matter here is that Twitter is losing money, frankly, Twitter is bleeding money, and the idea that Twitter employees who are running the company into the ground because of whatever social agenda they're pushing or peddling, the idea that those employees have any leverage in this conversation is completely laughable. Yet of course, like the insufferable ideological leftists that they are, they believe they're in a position to threaten litigation against Elon Musk and to issue demands. We demand of current and future leadership respect. We demand leadership to respect the platform and the workers who maintain it by committing to preserving the current headcount. You lost $221 billion last year and you probably lost even more this year. You're lucky to still have a job. We demand the preservation of the current headcount. These people are out of their minds. Safety. We demand that leadership does not discriminate against workers on the basis of their race, gender, disability, sexual orientation or political beliefs. We also demand safety for workers on visas who will be forced to leave the country if they are laid off. Essentially what they're saying is that we demand that you don't fire any foreign workers. That seems a little bit ridiculous, not to mention kind of rich. The idea that they're demanding no discrimination against workers based on their race, gender, or political beliefs, when all they ever do is discriminate against people based on their political beliefs, and in some cases, even their race. I'm sure that this rule applies to everyone who isn't a conservative white Christian male. Protection. We demand Elon Musk explicitly commit to preserve our benefits, those both listed in the merger agreement and not remote work. We demand leadership to establish and ensure fair severance policies for all workers before and after any change in ownership. Dignity. We demand transparent, prompt, and thoughtful communication around our working conditions. We demand to be treated with dignity and to not be treated as mere pawns in a game played by billionaires. Sincerely, Twitter workers. Yeah, I don't know. I honestly have no sympathy for any of these people. I mean, you are the over-bloated Twitter staff that provide absolutely no value to the company. The focus of Twitter over the last couple of years has been to play the arbiters of truth within the public conversation. It's clearly backfired. And Elon Musk claiming that he's going to shave the workforce and increase the monetization options of the website. In other words, he's going to turn it into a profitable company. Seems like basic business 101. It's not playing the game of billionaires. You leftist ideologues. A company needs to turn a profit. That's basic business 101. And if a company is bleeding money and there's a bunch of useless staffers that are drinking lattes all day and pretending to code. I mean, we all know that Twitter hasn't released a feature update in God knows how long. The idea that your job should be protected because, I don't know, leftism or something is ridiculous. What happened to the m private company argument? Elon Musk is going to hold the majority of shares in the company. He's going to be the de facto owner of the company. He's even stated that he's going to take the company private. And at the end of the day, he can do as he sees fit to turn the company into a profitable enterprise. It's that simple. Nothing but more entitled whiny leftists who just can't accept basic accountability. There are consequences for running a company into the ground and being part of the company's demise. You're not going to keep your job if you're not providing value and you're running the company into bankruptcy and you're not entitled to your job just because you think you're some sort of online speech moderator superhero. You're not. You're an unconstitutional censorious hack and it seems as though your time is up. Twitter is about to get absolutely mega based, folks. And the craziest part of all, Donald Trump might be back on Friday. I know Trump said that he wouldn't be back on Twitter, but Lord knows I'm missing me some mean tweets. That's what I got for you guys, though. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like and possibly subscribe to the channel. I'm going to get back to work. Thanks for watching, friends, and I will see you on the next one.